Hey guys, Thunder E here and uh, welcome to our gaming on our MacBook Pro Core 9. Yes, and there's a lot of talk about this specific type of MacBook Pro because of the overheating issues, throttling, all that stuff. We're not talking about that mainly here. It's all about gaming. And we're gonna focus on two games in this video. One of them is Dying Light and the other is Fortnite on the MacBook Pro. So no Windows gaming, we're not doing that in this video. You can always install Windows and you see how that is. But what do we have here? What kind of MacBook Pro are we running with? So it's a Core 9 version. First of all, it's 15 inch. Uh, we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM. So we maxed that out. We went with 512 uh, gigabytes of storage because eh, we don't need that. We're just testing our games here. And uh, we have the RX 560X. So it's roughly like a 1050 in there if you want to put it in you know, GTX card ranges. It's a $4,000 MacBook, it's expensive. Yeah, a lot of people use it for editing and whatever, but really for 4,000 bucks, you gotta do some gaming for me because it's a lot of money. So we said, let's put it to the test strictly as a MacBook. Now, this device is slick. It looks like a regular MacBook. Again, this is an update in specs. Uh, we've got, of course, the Retina display with all mics, that wallpaper there. So if you guys want the wallpaper, I have a link for you guys down below. The four Thunderbolt ports that will come into into, into some use in this video later on. And we got everything fired up and ready to go. So here's something really pretty interesting here. We played some games before the update. We played uh, Dying Light before the update. And before the update, the update to fix the thermal throttling. This thing was terrible. It, Dying Light ran really bad. It went from like, like 21 frames per second down to like two sometimes, all on medium settings, which was not good. So I really can play the game. Then we tried Fortnite. Fortnite, um, I had to drop it down all the way to low settings. Uh, and at low settings, at some point it hit at 120 frames per second and it dropped down to like 12. It did this thing where it just fluctuated between frame rates, didn't matter what settings I put. When of course I couldn't play it on high, it just wouldn't run. On medium, it fluctuated the same way, really, really bad. So that wasn't, that wasn't good. I was about to just run it off a cliff and say, it's really terrible. Then the update came in to fix the throttling issue. So that happened. Uh, it still runs really loud. So this thing makes a lot of noise. The fans blare up when you, you turn on any game, especially Fortnite. Uh, it runs really warm, very hot actually. So don't get me. And the heat comes out of the, the speakers on the side too, which is not pretty cool. But we tried it out again with the update and Dying Light ran much better. We got around 40, sometimes it went to 60 frames per second, but I'll say about 40 was the average. Much better, much smoother on there with the RX 5, 560X. So it's good. Then we went over to Fortnite. Fortnite also ran much better. Um, at this point, no more crazy fluctuations. There's still a point where it fluctuates at the beginning of every game or match, which I don't know why. I think it's just something with Fortnite on the MacBook. Um, the, um, the highest I actually got to was about maybe 70 uh, one time, but it was around 40 to 50 frames per second, roughly, that was the average. So Fortnite was quite playable on medium settings on this, and it was really nice that I could actually play both Dying Light and Fortnite on the MacBook Pro. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Now my $4,000 machine can do some gaming, at least light gaming, if you will. So we decided, how about having adding an eGPU in there? Apple just announced the Blackmagic eGPU. It's like $699, but no, 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 we're not using that because to me, that's just too expensive. So we went with the Razer Core X. The Razer Core X is $299, and you can use any graphics card because the Blackmagic eGPU only comes with an RX 560, which is the same card I have in the machine. And the Razer Core X, I decided to put in an RX 580 graphics card. Yeah, this is an MSI card. It's only, I got it for about $250. And of course, the uh, Razer Core is $299, so it's much cheaper for me right there. That's $550, bucks, and I can put any card I wanted. So we plugged that in. We plugged it into our um, uh, Core i9 MacBook Pro. It recognized it, and we fired up our games again. So we started off with Dying Light. Dying Light ran closer to 60 frames per second. Um, there were times where it stayed closer to 60. The averages were probably around 55. 50, 55 roughly, ran really smooth, especially in fight scenes. So when you got into battles with enemies and zombies, it dropped a little bit, maybe closer to like yeah, 45 or so, but not that much. It was much more playable and it was much a much better enjoyable experience. That was cool. So what about Fortnite? Yes, again, those dip issues tend to happen. 
uh, running the game at medium, this thing ran much better. Uh, there were times it went past, uh, you know, 70 frames per second, 80. Uh, the average was more, more around 55 to 60, much more steady in that nice 55 to 60 frames per second range, which was fantastic. So it shows that the MacBook Pro can do some gaming, especially with the eGPU. That is a pretty cool combined setup and you get a much better gaming experience. But wait, since we're using the Razer Core X and we can put in another GPU, how about we try an NVIDIA graphics card? So like a GTX 1080 Ti. Uh -huh. Now, um, normally you can't actually use an NVIDIA card on, of course, a MacBook Pro, uh, especially under for eGPU, the solution is not there, but there is. Now, if you wanna set this up, definitely go check out my buddy, uh, The Unlocker, as a video on how to actually use an NVIDIA card with an eGPU on your MacBook Pro. Yes, he's got a way to do it. It's pretty simple. He helped me do it because I was just too lazy, but definitely go check out that video. We have the link for you guys down below uh, or also in the cards as well, but this brought a whole different dynamic to it. So we fired up, of course, Dying Light. Dying Light rang pretty much capped at like 60 frames a second. This thing was solid, it was smooth, it was nice. But you don't care about Dying Light, you care about Fortnite. So how about Fortnite? Fortnite, medium settings, it was pushing close to the 120 frames per second. Uh, this thing was really nice, the refresh rate was good. Again, there was still that stuttering early, which I don't know why, but you can clearly see the performance from the GTX 1080 Ti showing off on there. So if you're a gamer, this will work well. If also you edit video and you want to have some more power, you can do it too. So hopefully this gives you a really good idea of how the MacBook Pro handles gaming, especially the Core i9 version after, before and after the software update patch. Also shows you what you can do with the eGPU gaming wise, whether you're going with a AMD card or even doing something like running it with an NVIDIA card. And again, if you wanna find out more about that, how to use an NVIDIA card in MacBook Pro, go check out the Unlockers video. So hopefully this gives you guys a good idea. Thank you very much for watching. I know this is interesting for some people, maybe not for everyone, but I like to game, so I definitely like to try this kind of stuff out. So if you've got any questions or any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like and share this video, favorite this video, subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment.